Look at this. I got headphones <laughs> on. I got a mic going. <laughs> Baby. Huh? If only people could see you now. <laughs> hey, no video. We've gone through this before. All right, no all video. right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to This Commerce Life. This is a podcast aimed at small, medium entrepreneurs focused on commerce. I'm Phil, your host, and Kenny, your co-host, will join us as well. And we're going to talk to you about the world of retail and commerce and how things are changing in the world. Hey guys, Phil here. Just before we start the episode today, um, bringing you something a little bit different. We have a, a special offer from Intuity Performance. Uh, you've met Ange, Ange McCabe before. She's been on uh, a couple of episodes here. And Scott and Ange, uh, who run Intuity Performance, are running a leadership, uh, a whole person leadership cohort. Um, and it's a chance for you to spend some time with Scott and Ange. They um, focus on helping leaders be better leaders and they are building a, a group of a tight-knit group of, of leaders that they want to be able to do this with it's a 12-week program helps you um, define and cultivate your leadership style helps you to um, bring confidence to your your people management skills and then helps you also be uh, a better emotional intelligence leader so that among other things they are amazing folks and what they've done is is reached out to us and said if anyone's interested if you click the link that we will have in these show notes um, you're going to get a discount so they're going to look after you click the link tell them that's uh you know that this commerce life and kenny and phil sent you and um they will make sure they look after you okay um so uh link is in the show notes uh whole leadership whole person leadership cohort brought to you by intuity performance okay on to the show two seconds uh, where, wait where are you going oh i guess okay and he says battery is dying oh right 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 yeah so that, that's kenny <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man and so are you you're uh you're based out of Squamish still. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's, we just like, I secured a facility. Um, so we have been setting it up and then I just, my, my hired the started on Mondays and ops manager. Yeah. Things are going pretty quick. And then this following Monday, like this Monday coming up, uh, my marketing manager starts. And then we're like, yeah, that's the, my, my main key key roles and then we'll have people working in the facility and street teams Holy and stuff crap. like that so all this time by yourself and then mm -hmm. like one hire now a second hire That's yeah it's amazing. been busy it's been a, and then like yeah this whole the whole year so far has been super busy and awesome and everything's kind of happening at once but that's crazy you know that's fine <laughs> that's craziness kenny you good i'm here <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> We're actually done already. Honestly. So we, we, I'm glad you guys had the, I, I caught some of the talk. I'm happy you guys had a good discussion. There, I apologize. Oh, don't worry. I'm usually disorganized, but not quite that bad. No, it's all good. It's all good. Oh, we um, yeah. Thanks no, for pitching in too. Yeah. Last minute. Yeah. Yeah, Jared called me or was talking with me this morning. I like sent out an investor update last night, and he, I think he like he was like, oh my god, that was so rad. I'm so pumped. Like, oh my gosh. And he's like, what are you doing at seven? I'm like, oh, you're buttering me up. <laughs> yeah, there's something you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um, no i, I appreciate until, it thank you yeah I but thank you I for apologize for, for coming from my couch and not my office but i've got a tiny puppy beside me and he fell asleep on me and i just can't move him ah leave him <laughs> no as long as you're comfortable uh, that's all yeah, good yeah, yeah, that's, that's all really good yeah i got, matters, I got so. two pretty cool pups oh that's yeah that's so amazing well, that's nice time. so that's nice. I'm good here <laughs> okay cool awesome cool so, so tonight we have we have um, Sarah on, who's the uh, CEO. Oh, sorry, Sarah Goodman, who's the uh, mm. CEO and founder of, of um, Chewies. Chewies, sorry, right? Chewies. Yeah. Um, I'll let her explain it, but uh, um, so you know, Sarah, like I have a habit of buying things from brands that we interview, so mm. I've already started shopping. Just oh, so I'll you know, it's usually code. during the podcast. So if you have a code, give Generally. it to him. I have a code, yeah. Because we're going to lose him in a second. He'll be snooping around yeah. online I'll and be, buying stuff. I'll be buying and... stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. got a code that everyone can use for a discount. It's just Chiwi's Love, all caps. Chiwi's Love. Okay. That's easy. 
okay. which is just chiwis.co is the website. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, well, since you started, yeah, I'll have, have to go on too, right? So, yeah. Like oh my gosh, yeah. No, it looks great. Um, so yeah, no, so so we're we're really lucky. Um, Sarah was was free tonight. We had a, a last minute we had a last minute cancellation, and he was nice enough to find um, and rope Sarah in um, mm -hmm. to to take his spot. So we, but we really Poor appreciate. Sarah. it. We're glad we got you on, and then uh, and then Sarah's going to the CHFA cool. show, so we'll see her there as well. So oh, very cool. Yeah. This is nicely nicely yeah. packaged. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a big booth there. Yeah. Got lots of pals. It's gonna be fun. It's pretty pretty. It's it's a, it's a nice looking line. That's it's got a really nice look. The colors are beautiful too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wanted it to pop on a shelf. Um, yeah, and it's really pretty. Like seriously, it's really nice. Thanks. Do you um? So that's about as formal as we get. <laughs> as we get. Um. Do you do you want to do you want to um? So do you want to introduce yourself and then and then um? I think from here on in. Um, the show and, uh, you know, kind of the episode is, is really, it's, it's yours, right? Like we, we'd love to hear about how you got to where you are, where you come from a little bit. Um, you come from Squamish, which is some of the most beautiful That's parts pretty of cool. BC. Nice, nice spot. Um, I, I, my, I, I've been out there quite a few times over my lifetime. And then I've been out there a lot recently. Um, Kenny and I are doing some work with, with a company out there, but um, my son came out with me and I'm a hundred percent sure he's moving to Victoria now. Um, mm -hmm. I took him through the Island and he just couldn't stop talking about it. He's trying to figure out how to get his mom and his two sisters out there. He's got the whole thing, you know, he hasn't worked out the money part, but everything else he's figured out already. He's like, Dad, I know what we're going to do now. I'm like, what? <laughs> he's got um, the money part figured out. Oh, dad, yeah, you know what we're going to do? Yeah, we're going to buy a place, yeah. Dad. <laughs> we'll buy a place in Victoria. That's what we'll exactly do, Dad. Yeah, that's his, exactly, exactly it. So anyway, but um, I will turn this over to you, Sarah Goodman. Tell yeah. us about um, this amazing adventure you're on. Sure. So... I started Chiwis after becoming pretty over the role I had in tech. I ran a consumer health tech company called Vital Signs, and we yeah. developed an app and a piece of hardware that helped people get healthier yeah. by tracking a heart health metric that wasn't available to people before. I, I co-founded that um, company with a mathematician and a doctor, and I was the face of the company. I raised money. I pitched, I did everything in the, in the business other than coding the app. So that kind of propelled me into being able to start Chiwis in a much more, uh, probably organized fashion. It was a lot, it was, it was more fun, but before I was in tech, I was a nutritionist still am, I guess. <laughs> um, but an acting nutritionist, uh, and there was this thing that I made all the time to go and I live in Squamish in the mountains and lots of hiking and backcountry activities, camping, all that. And there was just something that I made all the time because I like really intense flavors. As a nutritionist, I know what I'm putting in my body and I'm also like fairly careful, everything in moderation. But there was this one thing that just didn't exist. So I made it myself and it was kiwi chips. And I like, they taste like healthy Sour Patch Kids. And I like, I would just use, keep it full skin on, slice it, dry it till it was crispy and light, put it in a bag and bring it wherever I went. And, you know, while I was running the tech company, I would always still make these. And people would always say to me like, these are so cool. I've never seen them. I would buy these. Didn't think of anything of it at all. I would hear it all the time. And then like seven years deep into tech, I was like, man, I need, I am so just, it wasn't my baby. I was very good at regurgitating the information. And we like had a multi-million dollar company and traveled a lot, went on Dragon's Den, did all of that. And I was just like, I got to do something else. I wonder what I should do. CPG has always been really interesting to me. And I love snacks. Like I'm obsessed with food. And I thought on my evenings and weekends, I'm going to research if this kind of product could be possible. Like, is this something that exists already? Has, it, has someone done it and failed? Um, I just tried to find any information I could. And then I started speaking to people in the food business, be it like entrepreneurs. I consulted with people who um, had like 20 plus years or like food industry veterans, learning about the margins, all the structures, everything before I would like just jump in. Um, and I did a couple courses of like how to get your retail or your product on a retail store shelf and things like that, that were 
you know, got me kind of prepared. And I even went as like far as I, I designed a prototype bag on 99 designs, which is just like, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but you yeah. just pay, do a contest for designers. I got a hundred bags printed in China and sent to me my house. And I would make the product, put it in these bags that I thought were awesome. Um, and I even went heat sealed them and I'd bring them on adventures and be like, I bought this on at Whole Foods. What do you think about it? So people would not just be like, oh, here's like, here was my glad bag full of treats. Everyone's yeah. obviously like, oh, you made right. them. They're great. But I would say I bought these. What do you think? Oh, these are Whole Foods. Um, and I would get real feedback and I would actually send them to people and say, film your partner looking at the bag and opening them and eating them. Like I, getting that kind of feedback, that was like my market testing. And then like the final thing was, and this was one thing I learned when I was meeting with a consultant. She was like, as much as you think this bag is good, go to the stores you want to be in and put it on the shelf, take pictures on a bunch of different stores, different places. Yeah. And like immediately I was like, Oh my God, this bag is so bad. And then I ended up like, and I, you know, a lot of this work that I was doing was when I was kind of like slowly leaving my role um, at vital signs. Um, and then right before COVID hit, I, I took the plunge into Chibis and I was like, all right, I went, I, I had met already this, the president of a food distribution company they did, that did shelf stable foods. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we had the bags now at this point that you see today. And so it was started with just the two Kiwi chip skews, a tropical mm -hmm. variety and a uh, original. And I went to this course and he was talking and he said his email after, and I reached out to him and I'm like, Hey man. I know this goes like, I haven't even launched yet. This is my story. This is the bags. I will get myself into like 75 stores because that's what I've been told you have to do to prove yourself. Is it cool after that? If I reach out to you, would that be okay? And he was just like, Sarah, it is so evident that you come from tech and marketing. Like no one starts with a bag like this. This is like really cool. Didn't even try it. Took us on. So we had distribution prior to launch, which is, I feel very lucky for, and, and which is unheard of. So like cut to right before COVID starts, I'm like, great time to start a business. I'm going to go rent a corner of a kitchen from these women in, that had a, um, like a kombucha style drink, kefir, kefir drink in Squamish. I rented like 200 square feet, maybe bought, got, did a tiny friends and family around, bought a commercial dehydrator. And I was like, this is gonna be so easy. This is gonna be so easy. I've already made these before for so long. It's gonna be like simple. Go in there. I'm spending like 14 hours in the kitchen, just losing my mind. And I tell the distributor, I'm like, okay, we can go soon, but like, let's go slow. Small independence. I've got to learn how this works. Just me. I'm just doing myself. Two days later, call. Hey, Sarah, guess what? Whole Foods is in. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's amazing. But like, okay. Yeah, but really, but right? Wow. So I started. It's amazing, but not really. It's like it's not because why well, haven't got this done yet? Like, what am I supposed to do? <gasps> what? So I'm like, yeah. not. I, I'm. I think it's great, and of course, you get like this dopamine rush. You're like, okay, I can right. do this. And I start, you know, making the product. We start shipping it out to these stores, and I, as someone who's been in business for a while, I think to myself, okay, great, they've come on. I have the capacity to make like X amount. What if Whole Foods National all of a sudden comes on and they want three thousand cases? I can't do that. This is a shitty business idea. What a fucking dumb business idea. I'm sorry for swearing, but oh like, I, I was really, I was just like, I'm such an idiot. Like, why did I not think of this? And COVID started and I used it to my advantage. Super hard. I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I need to take like pandemic. And I said, we got to press pause for a sec. Just hold on. I'm going to figure sorry, this sorry, out. Sorry. So, so you make a product, your first crack at it draws one of the biggest if not, yeah, no, the biggest natural grocer in the industry to your doorstep. And it's you're like, you want. hang on a second, this sucks. Well, it's, <laughs> it was not a, even a close to scalable model, right. which like yeah. for okay. me, I hear you. especially coming from tech, yeah, I'm looking at a growth thing here. Like I, I actually come at, bus at the food business a bit different than a lot of others. Like I have yeah. a plan here and yeah. it's not to go slow. I just don't do that. Um, so yeah, I took a good chunk of time and I said, just wait. I'm going to figure this out. Sold the machines, cut the lease and spent months finding the perfect co-manufacturers and partners who could scale, make the product better than I could scale quickly. And I had yeah, manufacturers in different parts of the world. We would dry the product right by the farm. So it actually tasted better because there was no travel of this fruit imported in bulk. So you're not importing 
heavy fruit you're importing, the chips, and then we'd pack it here in BC because then we're still a local product. So stores, yeah. certain stores will 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 right. take you on when you're smaller. And so we launched with that model February of last year. So February of 2021. So now we've been in business like just over a year and went from zero to it by the end of this month, it'll be like 700 stores, probably um, whole foods national, you know, <laughs> it happens. Awesome. Um, and I, like I said in the beginning, like I, I really like a super intense flavor and I love kiwi chips, but I was always quite scared going to stores and talking to, um, buyers because because they are kind of polarizing mm -hmm. if someone doesn't like that like tangy mm -hmm. taste and I knew I wanted to develop different chips for other flavor profiles and so in November of last year I launched mango chips pineapple chips and orange chips and the thing with us and like everything that we put out ever you'll always know that it's 100% natural there's nothing added to it ever we use as much of the fruit as possible including like the skin and the core and the rind totally edible and we use upcycled fruits. So like the ugly fruits, whenever possible as well. Um, so when I was developing the whole model, I was like, okay, now everything's outsourced. This is great. I realized that there was one bottleneck, which was there was nobody in BC or even LA or anywhere who could pack the product in a semi or, or fully automated way. Everybody was doing it by hand, which is very expensive, especially when you're paying an outsourced company to do it by hand, then they have to make a margin on that, Absolutely. which like, yes, obviously. So I was like, well, I'm going to be that person then. And so I raised more money just recently, Jaron came on and part of that raise was to buy um, a semi-automatic packing uh, machine for a product like ours. Cause they're different shapes and sizes. If you were uh, doing a liquid or nuts or like seeds or something that that exists, but <clears throat> I, uh, I am now going to be able to have that ability and potentially help other businesses who need that service as well, if we can, but that's why. So we just are starting to set up this facility in Squamish where now we have our own team that will be doing all of that um, in-house. So, wow. so one day when you're a multi-million dollar, can I come work for you? Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> I, I, that is the most organized yeah. approach that I think we've ever heard. No, no, oh, really. No, yeah. seriously, most people, first yeah. off, pause is usually not a word that most would use. M most would just shit themselves, try to get family into the 200 square feet and try <laughs> to be a co-packer. That's what they would do. Yeah. Right. They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't think of it. Um, when they get Whole Foods calling, the first thing they wouldn't do is think, how do I do 3000 boxes? They'd just be thrilled and just start doing not mm -hmm. anticipating that oh my shit if i do get 3000 uh, no. cases it, it, like, it'd be a week trouble. later you we we would get that phone call going guys what do you want me to do what do i do like <laughs> 3000 like i just I don't figured have out banks. i just yeah. figured out how far i i i'm in the hole for from a right. from a like <laughs> From All a capital size, investment, from a bags financial, take from three a... months, right? <laughs> During COVID, bags take six months. Yeah. They have no planning ability. So, to be honest with you, I mean, yeah, and that's what I was. I was like, no, it's a very savvy. Did you get, yeah. So you were obviously connected to people who were in CPG. No. And so you did like this is all you. Yeah. Without C, so from a tech world to CPG, and you're. Well, I don't care. I don't understand you because uh, I did, I did like, consult for a couple of hours with one and I, and I tried to yeah. talk to some people, but you know, I think a lot of the skill wow. and I think it all kind of, it does relate and it's what I thought felt right. It's, well, it's you're thinking honestly, spot it's, on. it's a very, wow. it's a very savvy move. Like yeah. I, I think the, the best, probably four or five brands that I've run into. And I think Kenny's run into the same where they've gotten themselves in that spot. Um, like a couple of, I think one pause because they literally went, I don't think I want to do that much business. Right. And kind of went, I, I want to go small. I don't, I don't want, I don't want this. Right. Um, the other ones were like, I want it. I want, I want it. And you're going, you can't do this number. Yeah. Yeah. But I want it. I want, I want it. So like, in four of those cases, I help them figure out how to really BS their way onto like a a beta test. So we went back to the one was Walmart US, um, two were Loblaws here, and then one was Walmart Canada. And then in each case, 
I helped them frame up a case where you you went back to the the retailer and said, listen, we also want to make sure that we're you know proving a use case with you as well because we want to make sure you're the right retailer. Could we just go into a small set of stores, right? Mm -hmm. And then we literally crafted like, what can, <laughs> what can you afford? <laughs> right what can you afford and then let's make that the test case right um but it, i've i've never i've never gotten anyone who who did what you did which is amazing i, I um, honestly I, i'm trying yeah. to think i i know i know tons of people have started yeah. businesses yeah. tons of people have done sort of what you did but i know nobody who paused yeah. or thought it through um like who had like it sort of going and said okay hang on i you know most think scaling but they're not they're not thinking scaling they think they want to get bigger but they don't know what that means and they don't know how to scale and they don't know really mm -hmm. even what the hell does that mm -hmm. mean and what do i need to do they just think okay I'll, you know if i'm doing 14 hours well i'll just do 20 hours mm. right i mean it and you're thinking no you're, you're kind of missing the point like it's that's yeah. not yeah it's not gonna work it's, that it's not gonna work right yeah. Honestly, so to be honest with you like i'm wow it changes things like it changes every, like i have a I have a full blast plan of how I want this to go. And, um, and everybody who's come in, like raising money as well. Like, man, I raised money in technology as like a young ish blonde woman. And it was brutal, so brutal. And then with this, there was even some investors that I talked to who I had pitched, I'd sat with for like hours trying to explain the sciencey thing. And like, this is all the stuff we can do. And like, I would have a 20 minute phone call and they just got it. Like it's an easier sell yeah. and I'm coming at it with, with a growth mindset of like, man, like, I don't want to just do 10 X this year. Like I want to do 20 X. How do I do that? Yeah. And who are my partners and what does the cash flow look like? What do we need? Actually? I actually was going to raise 1.5 million. I put it down to 500. So I was like, that's all we need. Even if we did. So like our first year, you know, COVID no sampling, anything. It was about 132 grand. I say we all the time. I'm always pitching people. It was $132,000 of revenue for last year. And this year we've already done far more than that. In the that's first impressive. Year. That's, that, but, that's, but that's, it's that's even impressive. more impressive because the we is actually just Sarah, Sarah right. and her one dog. And now Sarah and her two dogs, two dogs. Yeah, like there's two here. You know, I don't yeah. know if you saw them. Sorry. So yeah. There's two there. <laughs> wow. Well, well, no, but, but the puppy is only four months old, right? So you have the eight year old. He actually, right? so. he actually is now eating his donut on the ground. Oh, awesome. He's oh. so cute. <laughs> that's nora she's tired um that was yeah. me. that was me before i got into the podcast <laughs> i was nora until I until it got hey hey i'm trying to be like you know as organized as possible and i was yeah. just i was telling phil you know i just had a new it's been just me and on monday my i hired an operations manager i heard that yeah he started and that will take a lot like right now one thing there's you know obviously supply chain everyone's just freaking out we're launching with a really big, well, for me, big 192 store door store, save on and yeah, local. You know, so I assume save on. Wow. Yeah. So their, you know, their order is more than we made in like the first six more than Chibi's made in the first six months of business last year, you know, and, um, the bag thing, like, yes, I can get bags for eight cents a bag from China. It wasn't going to take three to six months. So instead I'm like, you know what, I'm going to spend a bit more and get them digitally printed here from, mm. um, EPAC and whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to spend 30 cents, whatever I can build do it that. in, whatever it's, it's, it's okay. And so I actually, if, if I was making, if we were making the product here still like the amount of equipment, the cost of the equipment to have that kind of scale, like, why would I ever invest in that when there's people who have the ability, the the safety protocols, the staff, everything who can do that. And like, I did R and D with all these businesses and it was great because it was COVID. So I didn't have to go anywhere. I had snacks come into my door. We would zoom. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> but wow. you know, and, and at this point it's almost, you know, if things with supply and freight and the world and stuff did end up changing, we may be at a, a point at, at some time where we would bring things back in house maybe, but like it's working right now. And one of the people who I consulted with, and actually a lot of people when I was just trying to chat um, early on would say like, if somebody else has the ability to do what you're doing, don't reinvent the wheel, just use them. And I did that. I followed that until I got to that like bottleneck point where mm -hmm. I was like, everybody is packing these bags by hand. That is so crazy. Mm -hmm. 
And so now with this new machine, hopefully we'll get our, our packing cost down to like five cents a bag. But that what you did again is, is the logical part. The front part of you know the dehyd- dehydrating or drying or whatever you're doing, all that stuff is, is complicated. You, mm-hmm. it, you can do it. I mean, obviously you can do it. I, I can definitely feel that. Like you can do pretty much, I think pretty much anything. Like, <laughs> you could definitely do that. But you do, there's a capital outlay of building. There's yeah. capital outlay of equipment. You've got a, a cap, an outlay of, of expertise you're going to have to hire. Yeah. I mean, seriously, the, the other the other guys have already done that. Like just, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you, so, you, so you have to give them a 25 margin, a 30 margin. Like I don't give a shit what margin they work on. Mm-hmm. Whatever. No, but yeah, build it in. Need to build it in. Like you know, build it in. relearning yeah. something that somebody already For knows. What? They've already done it. Sense. Yeah. There's yeah. um there's a really cool technology coming out of the University of British Columbia right now. And they actually approach one of one of my investors introduced me to to um the group and they have proposed a pilot project with us. They have this brand new kind of drying that they're actually gonna be doing a pilot project at our facility and How cool is paying that? for a salary member and paying for all this equipment that we get to potentially keep after. So, Hey, that would, that's amazing. That's, well, that's amazing. So that's something that like, it's yeah. exciting. I like the R and D side of things. Yeah. I really think that the, the line could go to a lot of different ways. It keeping with those like values of just natural, feel good about eating, eat it, mm-hmm. eat right. your bags. It's fine. Feed it to your kids. Like you're good. Um, that kind of thing. And really like what I'm trying to build here, it isn't really even about the product. The product is great and I love it, but I'm trying to build a brand and a voice and community that a bigger player is going to come around and want to have our group, our voice. Right. And I've actually like with this last round, I've brought on a lot of people. Like I have an advisory board of uh, four, but I brought on, you know, some execs from smart suites and people who have really actually done exactly what I want to do Yeah. because I, you know, I, I've made some, some good choices, but you know, if we can, if we can cut down the bumps in the road, <laughs> in the way, then that would be great. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of things like, especially like yeah. blah, blahs where it's funny. I've had, when I'm talking to food entrepreneurs now, I almost feel like a bit of an asshole. Cause I feel like there's been a lot of luck that's come my way, you know, getting distribution right away. Um, I've put a focus on social media and like, I hired some young people to do TikTok Cause like, I'm not dancing in front of a camera, but it's important. And even with like the minimal, um, following we have, like we had Loblaws reach out to us, which is, that's who knows, hopefully that would be deal. great. I would love to do that. Yeah. We had Gordon food service reach out to us, be like, Hey, like, would you like to partner with us for a 35,000 non-grocery? Like, yes, Chibis could be in fairies and resorts why and not what's the difference schools you know like and having those kinds of things pop pop up and be opportunities mm-hmm. that we aren't like fully going going actively going after but, that, but that's not luck though that none that of is, it's luck that is mm-hmm. you that is you creating opportunity by making sure that you were in the right places right like you because i think we've talked about this uh, we, we talk about this a lot right but but I don't think like when you work as hard as you work and you and you put the thinking into what you do, I don't think that's like I, I think I think that um, how quick it happens is probably uh, there might be a, a small bit of luck there. Right. Because um, of how quickly it happens. But it would have happened to you for sure. Right. Because of the way you've gone about kind of assembling this business and then thinking, it, thinking it through. So I agree. Yeah. With you. I think you, I think you can get lucky. Yeah. Right. But the luck isn't something that happens. The reason you got distribution right away, but, and it, it, it does happen periodically because what a distributor will look at, they'll look mm-hmm. at it and say, okay, you're not in um, a, a glad bag. Mm-hmm. with a sticker label that might be a 90 degree angle <clears throat> then yeah. a 45 then a 30 then on the yeah. wrong side then upside down so you were already in a spot where you know if i was sitting behind the desk when i was a buyer i would look at you and say okay so when are you launching i'm you know three months away okay you know what yeah i, I can see i know what you're doing i can see it so the whole mindset might be yeah okay shit just call me when you're ready yeah right i, I i'll go i mean I, you know you can do that the problem with most people and why it doesn't happen often like or infrequently is most come with ideas. 
Mm. And people forget, and I, everybody's got ideas. There's a billion ideas out there. They don't make businesses. They're just ideas. Everybody's got an idea. <laughs> but you got so far into your concept. I mean, you've already, you've proven it. You, you've done it. You yeah. tested it. You know, yeah. you, 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 you bullshitted that Whole Foods carried it before they did. You got people psyched into oh, saying, no, to give you the honest that. truth, though. But people could honestly tell you then, yeah. Oh, my God. Did you buy it? How much, how much was it? Where, now you can start doing research and you're thinking, Okay, shit, this is viable. Like, it's not, you know what it is, to your point, if you gave them a baggie, what do people do? They look at it and say, oh, yeah, sir, these are really good. Yeah. And you know, okay, but would you pay for them? Oh, um, oh, like probably $10.99. $10.99, like, it's not true. But when you show them and you tell them the story and say, yeah, they're whole, I bought them Whole Foods. I paid $7.99. Oh, yeah, that's really, that's not bad. Which Whole Foods? Like, then you start thinking, okay, shit, this actually, yeah, this can happen. Because, I, I, again, I, most people don't do that. Like, I, 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 I don't think it's a lot of luck. I think you, you, you really, you did, you're smart. You figured it out. You, oh. you did it properly. And then you created some lucky situations or timing, and that's the A-team. But, no, I, I, that's, wow, good for you. Like, seriously. This is so exciting. Okay, okay first, I've got one quick question. Though. Why Kiwis? Because I, well, as a nutritionist, I know how good they are for you. And so I wanted something that was light. And was actually tasty and was kind of a superfood. So when I was out, you know, camping or hiking mm -hmm. or whatever, I could just throw it in my bag and I liked it. Cause I have a, I have a sweet tooth. I'm like obsessed with smart sweets. I have them. I have so many bags in my fridge right now, but, um, I just, it was just something that I made. So I really just liked the taste. I it's never, interesting. it's not, a, it's not, a, it's a popular fruit, but it's not like a, a banana, no, an orange, an no apple, would, peach. Yeah. And a, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. a kiwi is still not fringe. It's a bad choice of words, but you know, I know. No, it's no, funny, really, like, it's an odd one, right? Like, it's an odd yeah. one because, like, everyone makes all the other ones that you know. You, you get the coconut chips and all, like all that kind of banana, stuff. Banana, coconut, yeah, peach, yeah, yeah, yeah. mango, but papaya, pineapple, a... like logical. I mean, kiwi yeah. would. I tell you too, I probably wouldn't fuck kiwi. Not for, and I like kiwi. Even not that I don't chips. like them. I just don't think of it. Weird too. Orange is weird too. They're, oh my god, yeah. they're so good. And you kept so you, and you keep the rind on. Yeah, it's all really so delicious, and I. So we sell, um, we sell one pound bulk bags on our site as well for people who want to be a bit more package free. Um, and I always have a one pound bulk bag of the orange chips in my truck. Seriously. Like, they, they're so good. And then whenever we have like a sampler pack, we, we sell to people if they want to try. Which I'm about to buy. I'm buying the um, sampler pack. I say, I'm like, if you don't like, cause I, the kiwi and the orange, I say the, are the most polarizing only because you know they're a well the kiwi definitely is sour the orange i think is just amazing and tastes so sweet and the rind is is so good but if you don't if you end up not liking it they're so amazing in drinks i well, that, i imagine yeah. could reconstitute into a yeah oh shit no, that's i don't yeah that's and then good. the mango and the pineapple are just crowd pleasers and then so the the pineapple we include the core so it's tenderized and they're in like in really? quarters and they're, it's like thin thin crispy yeah. chips and then the mango um, has the skin on it still. Good for you. Huh. Even that's interesting, right? Because usually, uh, you know, what people do, they, they clean it right out, right? It's just. Yeah. So, well, for us, hmm. it's fiber. It's full of good stuff. All of the skins and all of them are, are full of good things. Like um, more than half of the vitamin C in a kiwi lives in the skin. But it also holds the fruit together. Um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, there's no reason to waste it. Like we're trying to be as, as like environmentally friendly as possible. I'm actually going to be putting up instead of doing a, a blog on our site that, you know, facts about fruit, no one wants to read that crap. Um, we just lift other rad humans and businesses up. And I'm actually, I do interviews for like badass people. And the next one that's coming out is with, uh, Hayden from food pack. He'll be at CHFA as well, but yeah, we talked to Hayden last night. So Hayden's amazing. And he's he awesome. Is, he knows all things about, you know, packaging. And I talked to him because I was like, Hayden, let's just expose the bullshit of all of this recyclable, compostable. Yes, please. It yes, is please. Bullshit. And Thank everyone's you. like, oh my God, why are your bags not recyclable? It's because I'm not going to put a fucking stamp on there that says like, you can recycle this when, when you a, can't. Layer, a layer of it can be recycled. Exactly. I'm going to pay a dollar more or something, a bag to lie to you. And then, or like biodegradable. So like tinier pieces of plastic are going to go into the water. And you. then the compostable ones, I don't know. I have a, I, I have an entrepreneur friend. They just started a compostable um, bag, 
like a chip company and their, their like value is the bag is compostable. I just, I, I actually had one person who uh, reached out, who's, who's an investor um, that I know and be like, he was like, can you look at this? Like, is this legit? And I didn't have an answer. Like maybe they found it, but I like, we can't, we can't just say that our bag is going to be recyclable. It's not. He, uh, when he, it, when it happens, I think yeah. the bigger ones, the bigger companies will start doing it and then maybe a solution will come and then it'll be cheap enough for like the smaller guys to do, but it'll happen. You know? It's just, we had Hayden on, we had, we talked him last yeah. night because he's podcasting at yep. CHFA like we are. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was, I've been on Hayden's podcast. He came on our podcast a couple months ago and we walked down this packaging front like you did and thought, well, shit. I mean, you know, you're trying to feel proud about yourself. You put things in, you know, buckets and bags and you're thinking, look at me, right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. Then you get these guys yeah, on, you're thinking you realize, like, no. what do you mean? It doesn't do that. Like it said on the yeah, bag, it's there's said, one municipality like in all of North America that would do this. processes this bag properly. And you're like, Oh, but you're it's thinking, not mine. So it's I got to send it in a truck yeah, yeah. somewhere else. And I'm not even sure they're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's bullshit. Like why, why do they, why did they just tell us that? Yeah. Well, or give like me the a, more friendly yeah. option. I think it was a docu series or something out there, and it's all about wish cycling, and it's very depressing. And it know. is. So we were we were depressed. We were so depressed. after we, we talked really to him, were. he's he's such a great guy. I love him too. And he's we such were, a nice like, guy. Oh my Kenny God. and I have kind of been on this path of of trying to be more sustainable, and and that was like a kick in the gut, right? Because we we're we we're both you know talking about, it. and then he was like, you know, but here's your problem, right? Is nobody does that yet, so it doesn't matter if you put it in that bag. Yeah. It, it just, you know, it's going to make its way into a landfill. We're both like, Oh my God. Like but I think oh, your, our whole is, lives are dumpster fires. This yeah, sucks. It's a, it's right? a like... shit show, right? You think, okay, that wasn't, that's not what I signed <laughs> yeah, up yeah. for, yeah. but I do like the, your angle. And I even like, cause we, again, we talked to Hayden a bit last night yeah. about it. And we were talking about, you know, the fact that it's, cause he, I know he, he, it's flexible packaging. Cause I use it in one of my other companies too. We use, we use his packaging, right? And because it ships better, the carbon footprint's better. Yeah, to your point, it's not, you know, because you'll have people always saying, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Thinking, well, why don't you go into business and figure it out? Because I'm going to spend a dollar fifty more uh, per unit. Your price is going to be now double. Mm. And uh, it's not going anywhere, guys. It's in the same shit show that it was 10 minutes ago. So there's no win. <laughs> and if anything loses, you're going to pay more. And it's still not going to do what you think it's doing. So yeah. I may as well just tell you what it is. Do it honestly and move on. I know. And I almost feel bad talking about it. Like when I, I feel bad about putting this interview out. Cause I, I know people who have like, like, but all these like good things. I know we know them too. I, I'm putting it out almost to cover our ass. Cause like we do care. <laughs> we care. But, but that's it's... just it. Like we all give a shit, yeah. but I just don't, I mean, I feel when Phil and I got off with Hayden, he leaves, we leave this podcast. We usually talk a little bit after, and then we signed off without the audio. And we're looking at each other thinking, like, I just feel like we got, li- I feel like we've been lied to. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I, I don't understand. <laughs> like, I thought we were doing, you know, you're, you're high fiving in the kitchen or, you know, patting your back. You're thinking, no, loser, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's going the same place all the other shit was going. It, it, it's, yeah. And then you feel like, well, what the hell? Why didn't anybody just tell us that? I mean, I'd still try to do the better option. And I think that's what it, hopefully what you're getting at too. It's, it's, it's better than what it could be, mm-hmm. but it's not what it says it is. No. Right. I know. I found it so depressed. You know, such a, we're actually that big machine we're getting is we're doing it through food pack. Me and Hayden are working together on, you know, I really like those guys a lot. It's hard not to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it really, yeah. it's, it's hard not to like Hayden's just a really, he's a nice guy. Right. And he's very bright and yeah. Oh, All the... hi buddy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're going to be at the show. What, yeah. what yeah. do you know? What booth number you are? Oh my god yes hold on i can find it right now for you are you with your distributor or are you on your own i'm with the, our broker which your is broker? bloom b-l-u-m-e yep. let's see booth oh stop it 1735 1735 yeah. well we'll so find you we'll make sure we put it in the episode notes too and then we'll, yeah, put we'll be there picture. yeah we have a big big ass bright booth Lots of snacks. We got really fun people and um, come by the booth. I'll give you guys some Chibi's hoodies. Oh, we're definitely coming by. Definitely coming, coming by. by. I, I'm looking forward to it. I just ordered to the sampler packs. 
Nice. So I'm kind of Thank excited. You. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Plus, I also want to find out who's on your advisory is, board because probably know some happens. of these people. Like, oh, I'll tell you. It's, I'll, I'll tell you exactly who it is. So I've got Richard Pollock, who is Well, this, Richard, we, mm-hmm. we work with. We work with, yeah. yeah. He's amazing. And he's, yeah. we're all like, I'm on a text basis with all of them. We actually just had my first ever, like, it's been very ad hoc till yeah. now. I was like, okay, now it's time to, to actually make this a bit more legit. We had our first ever uh, full group advisory board meeting where Judy Brooks, who is the chair of smart suites chaired the entire meeting. Wow. She um, is also an investor in Chibis. And then I've got Cindy Bockett. She was the CEO of smart suites and um, Richard. And then Praveen Varshney is on the board, who is yeah. um, my, my financial guy. And then Eve Laird from e, the CEO of Eve's crackers. Wow. I brought her on in the beginning. Cause she was just like someone who is just in my shoes. Yeah. And so her and I were actually quite, quite tight and we're about to hire we're about to sh- <clears throat> put out a job description we're going to share a salesperson for all the non-grocery because we have a very similar um target demographic yeah but yeah it's a really good group very like well-rounded and i also have you. a very good support system of people who i've just met and you know everyone is willing to help like, and i i also you know if i can help anybody i, I try to it's a good community. One thing you'll yeah. find. I mean, I don't yeah. know tech's like I've never been in tech. I've always been in, in tech is hit or miss. retail space. I come from but retail this space tech is awesome. and it's uh it's hit or miss. Sometimes you get really good dudes and then sometimes not so much. In CPG in general, it's pretty good. Natural CPG is a really good crowd. Yeah, it I'm really excited is. to like I, I I did we did plant at expo in November and it was really great and finally got to meet a lot of people who I've been chatting with and like just, you know instagram conversations things like that and emails but it's going to be cool to be at chfa because it's our first ever and Mm -hmm. you know we have a lot of retailers tons coming on right now you know just in the first like i think this month will be like save on safeway thrifty sobeys whole foods national healthy planet nature's aquarium those are nice nice also those are all nice stores they do good volume yeah and so it's a big yeah Yeah, you're in the right places things are craziness yeah you and the two dogs good lord look at you man hey i got my ops manager and an ops manager hey there's two people now day one and i have a broker and i have a distributor like these are people this is all external but i get it i get it but But again it's it's, amazing uh, yeah i'm i'm amazing i'm impressed that for someone who wasn't really in the space like like um yeah shit you you've done you did it well you get it so good for you like really that that's that's wow so that's that's pretty um, impressive we'll have to tell richard yeah uh, and and then anytime that you have new news or you want to come back on and talk yeah about like let us know i love this story just, just i love to hear all the skills we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out or if you if you get new yeah. fruits or you just want to talk yeah. or if there's something that went sideways that i know you'll fix because i yeah. doubt anything goes well, sideways thing, for too long <laughs> one thing that's been crazy and i never ever would have thought that this would be a thing that would be happening so we have we make our chips in different places in the world and we made our, I did a ton of, ton of R&D and made our pineapple chips and mango chips in Mexico hmm. and everything's great. Um, and we, well, the mango chips, they're the only one that's kind of seasonal. So we have to be really careful and, and over order. We have a right. long mm-hmm. shelf life, so mm-hmm. that, that's good. But I didn't expect to sell out of the mango really early, but London Drugs came on and they were like, we're going to take three SKUs. And then they bought up most of it and then it all sold out. And so they bought more. So we were sold out of the mango. And then I was like, okay, Mexico manufacturers, we got to get on it. Like I'll air freight this over. Like we cannot be out of stock. And I don't know if you guys know what's happening in Mexico, but um, no farmers will send anything. This is all kind of central Mexico. There's gang wars and civil unrest everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of farmers down there. Sorry. It's civil uh, unrest at home. Uh, yeah. But so we haven't been able to secure anything. And they actually said, you know what? It's just not happening. Our people can't even work. And, but thankfully at Planted Expo, I met this other manufacturer who was like, I would love to work with you and my team in a different part of the world. Can we do some R and D together? Cause I think we can make these better. I was like, maybe, wow. yeah, I kind of, I like my guys, but let's try. Mm-hmm. And just, I don't know, like we were working day and night on it with them. Cause I was, we found out, oh, we can, we can actually get this cost down quite a lot. Lots of stuff the Philippines, like you can go Southeast Asia. Like there's but lots of stuff. Like, will, will it taste the same? Can they do the same thing? Yeah. And just as like Mexico is really blowing up, we can't, we're like totally screwed. These guys have come in like in the clutch. That's awesome. 
but it's been so stressful. And now that we have these much larger retailers, you know, there is, we, we cannot short them and we cannot miss deliveries. Like we're going to get, you know, there's fines (laughs) left, right and center. And so that's something that's happened. So I'm going to go try to find you guys some mango to put in this or these orders for you, but we we're basically out until hopefully we'll get it right before CHFA. So you can short my, I'm actually allergic to mango. So I, I I bought it. I bought it because it's the best way to try them all. And then I was just going to give away the mango, but oh, um, all right. Well, that's so you good. can short me mango and I'm, I'm all good. I, I, I don't, care. Um, but it will be back, but yeah, it's just, you know, that kind of thing. It was unexpected and I feel really bad for all the people in Mexico who are dealing with that. It's like, yeah, what, it's, it's crazy. That, you know, yeah. I mean, it'll come back like, around though. Hopefully they'll yeah. figure this stuff out and then yeah. you rekindle yeah, but, relationships and whatever you need to but do. But honestly, this other manufacturer is amazing and they are so excited to work together and that's awesome. Um, yeah. So it's worked out, but it's taken a lot of effort, a lot of just, mm. you know, even today I was I'm losing sleep over these freight timelines and, you know, it's, there's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's all very good. Wow. Good for Amazing. you. What good a very cool you. story. Like seriously, that's, that's pretty impressive. I, I'm really glad you came on. Yeah, the show. me too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thanks. I'm glad you're canceled. <laughs> yeah screw those vodka soda guys you know what whatever you know what <laughs> we, were built, we were doing vodka sodas at home way before so who cares really it's not like he invented the wheel. you ever made a kiwi chip yeah, yeah you've done that yeah done a, done a whole orange okay but oh you put God. vodka so he with actually, flavor he loves the orange so much and i was like well jaron what color chibis hoodie do you want he's like orange i want an orange shoe i was like okay you can have an orange shoe. that's so funny he ordered that's a bulk bag of them yeah he's so funny yeah but yeah that's amazing. well we haven't like met him yet we, i talked to him on the phone yeah. a couple of times he was supposed to come on face tonight. To face. we've uh, we've zoomed i found out today I have a, I, I, we have a mutual friend in the industry that i didn't know until oh, today because no. i would have introduced you a long time so well you know talk is cheap right yeah i did it by myself wait wait yeah. for you it would you know could have been old and dead so that's yeah. awesome oh, wow I'm sorry. I'm glad he canceled. Not because I'm not glad he's canceled. Ah, whatever. I'm glad he canceled. You were a pleasure to talk to you. I think your story is really cool. You, 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 you knocked it right out of the park. You're very proud of yeah. yourself. That's what you oh, did is you. not the normal. And most people wouldn't have thought it through the way you did. So, wow. Good on you. Oh, that's nice. Good on you. Yay. Um, if you're around Sunday, we're recording Sunday. So Popeye and then yeah. and say hello. Yeah. We'll oh, get yeah. you I'll right back on the podcast. Yeah. So yep. it's amazing. I think Hayden's recording on Saturday, right? I think Hayden's yeah. at 11 o'clock yeah. on Saturday. I think yeah. we're one o'clock on, su- on Sunday. Yeah. And I think actually Richard and, and, uh, yeah. And the boys are uh, also recording. Cause he's got a yeah. podcast, right? Uh, what, on what, Saturday? Then he's yeah. doing, he's yeah. doing a couple at CHFA. Well, they got their own, like him, um, and a few of the buddies, they do, they actually do yeah, their own yeah. podcast. They actually have their own. Oh, There's five man. of them. So Charles oh, Chang, him, Ian Walker, mm-hmm. Matt Breach. And Ryan, Bennett. I don't know how they're going to fit in that little. Booth, I don't know how but... the five are going to do it, and plus they all want to talk, so I'm not sure how yeah, that's going to work. I don't know how that's going to work? They'll figure uh, it out. That'll be that. that yeah. So just the old, the old, yeah, you'll attach faces now and to to all the names and stuff. It's a great show. It's a lot of fun. It's a good. It's a good industry. You're going to really, really like. Yeah, the, I like the crowd. it. Yeah, you picked a good industry to go into. It's way anyway. more fun than tech. <laughs> I've never done tech, so I don't know. I love it. Yeah, it's it's more. I like it more. Like I, I did retail tech uh, here in Toronto for a bunch of years, but it's retail like tech is fun until you get into the tech stuff and I don't code. Right. So as soon as they get there and you're into sprints and all that, and you're like, I don't, yeah. can you just you know, tell me when it comes out the other end and I'll go. Do yeah, is something it ready with yet? It? <laughs> is it ready yet? Why are you code faster? Yeah, I, well, Seems like you could probably code like, faster than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't even know what you're looking at. So I will be in Toronto. I'm actually filming Dragon's Den next month. No way. That's okay. amazing. So okay. yeah, my second time on. <laughs> back. Um, yeah. And so I'm going to be like, I'm going to hopefully be going in there and offering them to close out my safe round. Like I raised on a safe, mm-hmm. which is like a simple agreement for future equity, which like does yeah never happen on that show. Yeah. And not bullshit them and just try to like it'll be great publicity. Yeah. But you know, it it'll be interesting. I had a good experience the first time. So we'll see. Okay. You have you been to Toronto before? I'm from Mississauga. Oh you are. <laughs> That's where <laughs> I, I am. Moved, I moved to yeah. uh, I went to visit a friend in Whistler. Yeah. When I was 19. And then I lived there for five years. Okay. 
and then I went to the Vancouver for um, a number of years, then moved to Squamish. Got it. No, you're from Phil's hood. That's where Phil's now. I literally, I'm in Mississauga. So yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I lived, I lived in Parkdale for three years, my first three years no of one, life and then Mississauga yeah. and yeah, then it's been BC. So it's, I've been in BC almost half my life now, but yeah, yeah. Wow. it's great. I, I, it's I, I go to Toronto quite like, I don't know, once a quarter, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Very cool. amazing. Well, we will see you at the show. So yeah. thank you very much yeah. for doing this. Yeah. Absolute thank you pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Cool story. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Been on it. Thanks. For I can't wait. No. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Can't <laughs> wait for my chips. It would be amazing. Yeah. Well, we got awesome. them out the door to you tomorrow. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Have a nice evening. Take care of yourself. Phil, Have you sticking on? Night. Yeah. I'll stay on. Awesome. All right. Bye guys. Bye. See you later. Thank you. She's amazing. Oh man, she's got her shit together. That's yeah. that's that's uh, she's, she's chop chop. She's I know we say there. that you know on a, on a lot of a lot of podcasts, but I mean shit. I mean I mean she's really got her shit together. Yeah, she's she's there. She's pause? all there. Yeah. Who pauses? Who pauses when somebody that big shows up on your doorstep? I, I don't know. I mean, most people would just just go right into coronary. Yeah. Yeah. Probably do it. Probably do it piss poorly incur some fines or stock outs like you know and make a mess of a launch i mean i mean well and then wow. and then quite That's honestly nutsy. it's like you've saved a bunch of brands i've saved a bunch of brands otherwise it's the buyer right like the 100%. buyer would would be the one that kind of goes you know what uh, hang on a second right <laughs> right i can see the whites of your eyes you know just just hang on a second right like you know let's yeah let's let me just take a breath a of air yeah, and yeah. we'll talk again in a couple months yeah 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 but yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's some buy. That's very few buyers. Most would go uh, get your shit together. You're gone, and that'll be it. Right. Um, so the way she did it is a smarter yeah, way to do it. Yeah, like yeah. just take a breath of air, figure it out, and do it right. I mean, I, I really, I'm, I'm actually, I, I really want. I'm impressed. I, I just because I don't, you just don't hear that. You don't hear that that often. Yeah, yeah. That's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, that really is to hit a pause and to and to understand that. Like that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, to be bag ready with no distribution and really not, not she had no clue, but really didn't know the industry. Like, did all the math, talked to the right people, figured out the calculation, sounded like she took some courses. And, and her, background, her background is a registered, she's an RN, she's yeah. a nurse. That's impressive. Like, seriously, the whole Maybe. thing's impressive. I mean, good, good on her. Like, shit, that was really, yeah, very cool. Good for her. Really good for her. Yeah, yeah Jiren, I, can, I hate to tell you, man, we missed you, but not maybe that much. I, I don't know. I'm really, I thought, wow, what a sub. Yeah, that's <laughs> a pretty, a sub. that's a pretty impressive sub. Wow, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Wow. Well, that's it, man. Okay, buddy. I think that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's it. That's, and that's the third podcast in two days. And I, think, yeah. I mean, I love you, but. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Time think, to go uh, away. Yeah, I think we need to break from each other. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. And we'll chat with you next week.